Assalamu alaikum friends, how are you? Hope all of you are doing good. So today I have come up with some useful formulas that you can remember and which will be very useful for you for strategic business reporting. And all the formulas are in one place. This I have collected from the learn signal. Okay. So let us go through some useful formulas for SBR. Starting with annual de uh, depreciation. So annual depreciation if it's a straight line method, then the formula is cost minus scrap value divided by useful life. Sometimes you might not have the scrap value. Okay. So it, it will be simply cost divided by useful life. In fact, most of the time the scrap value is not given. So it is simply cost divided by useful life. Coming to the net book value. To find the net book value, it will be then cost minus accumulated depreciation. Okay. So this is number one, number two, number three. Gain or loss on disposal. Okay, so disposal, uh, disposal proceeds minus net book value. It is not the cost. It is the net book value you have to take it. That means already depreciation has been deducted from that carrying amount of the asset. And then you deduct it from disposal proceed to find the gain or loss on disposal. All this uh, three formulas are for same thing only. Okay depreciation net book value and gain and loss these are linked with each other then depreciation of a revalued asset this is very important because most of the students are unable to do this part normally they will be able to calculate depreciation but when your asset is revalued then how do you calculate the depreciation it is the revalued amount that you have to take minus the scrap value Remain divided by remaining useful life. Okay. This was just useful life. This is the remaining useful life. For example, uh, you have the asset for five years and after two years only you revalued. So then it will be after two years. That means remaining three years. So you have to divide it by three. Okay. Like that. Here also if scrap value is not given, it's, it will be simply revalued amount divided by remaining useful life. So this amount also changes. Okay. It definitely will go upwards. This also will change. Okay. Remaining means obviously this, this will be uh, less, lesser than that one. Useful life. Okay. Now, fifth, tax exclusive price. So in order to find the tax exclusive price, you want to take the tax out of that price. They might give a price where tax is also there. So you want to exclude it. So how do you find out? Tax inclusive price into 100 divided by 100 plus the tax rate. Let's say the tax rate is 5%. Okay. So it will be 100 plus. So it will be divided by 105 because you want to take the impact of the tax out because tax is already included, right? So include that. It will be divided by 100 plus 5% tax, not 100. Now, profit or loss on partial derecognition of financial asset. Okay, partially you are derecognizing the financial asset. So, what is the profit or loss on that? Okay, carrying amount of the part that you have derecognized. Okay, minus the consideration, including any new asset received for that part. So, that consideration can include any new asset also that you have received for that part. Okay. For example, you have sold and you have got a new asset instead. So that you can include in the consideration, amount of the consideration. Consideration need not be always in cash. Sometimes you might re uh, receive a new asset for selling your, your asset, right? Seven, earnings per share. So earnings per share is net profit divided by weighted average equity shares outstanding during the period. So you can just simply take earnings, profit after tax, divide by share, number of shares. Okay. Now eight, the right fraction. Yes. At right fraction is, this is when you are doing the right issue. You need this fraction. Actual come right price. Okay. Come right price, not X right price. Divide by theoretical X right price. Make sure that you know how to find the theoretical X right price. First of all. The bonus fraction, this is when you're doing a bonus issue. 
number of shares after bonus issue divided by number of shares before bonus issue so after divided by before 10 gross profit this is simple gross profit margin operating profit margin net profit margin this are simple right it is simply the profit divided by revenue only whatever the profit is gross profit operating profit net profit so let us go to the return on capital employed profit before interest and tax divided by equity plus liabilities okay this is before interest and tax don't take after interest and tax students often get confused with the return on capital employed formula divided by equity plus liabilities because capital employed so that's your capital right equity and liability long term liabilities not short term liabilities like loans long term loans bonds like that 14 return on equity this are different here you have to take after tax because return on capital employed means what it includes both type debt holders as well as shareholders that's why you are taking before interest and tax before you are paying interest interest is for debt holders so it will go for debt holders as well as shareholders return on equity means after you have interest and tax whatever is remaining goes to equity holders right that's why it's after tax after tax means interest has already been deducted so whatever is remaining will go to the equity holders only not debt holders this is the easiest way to remember the difference between these two before tax or after tax capital employed includes both the equity plus debt so before interest and tax this is on equity uh, that means only for equity so after tax okay divide by equity of course and 200 15 is interest cover this is usually needed for calculating gearing ratios and all so or the impact of reconstruction schemes on interest cover and all so that time you might need this profit before interest and tax divided by interest charge remember interest cover that means what will go to the debt holders when something includes that what will go to the debt holders also you always have to take before interest and tax you remember this thing you will remember all the formulas relating to this nature where you are taking the profit whether before or after so profit before interest and tax divided by interest charge that means how much of your profit before you pay the interest and tax you are able to cover how much of uh, interest you have to pay from that profit higher the interest cover better it is in fact all these ratios if you see the higher it is the better it is all this i'm talking about the ratios definitely annual depreciation all those things the first few ratios are the first few formulas are not ratios okay so but the ratios higher it is better it is for all then we have interest asset turnover the word asset turnover means turnover divided by total assets revenue divided by total assets it is revenue divided by total assets sometimes uh, students take it as total assets divided by revenue no into 100 of course okay 70 return on capital employed earlier what was it return on capital employed number 13 now we have for 17 also return on capital employed but if you see the formula here it is different How is it? Yes, you can have two different formulas for return on capital employed. That's why you have to understand return ca on capital employed very carefully. That's why students make mistakes here. So it depends. In if in your case study you have been given the profit before interest and tax and equity and liability, then use the first formula. But if it's not given to you the profit before interest and tax, then how do you find out? Then you see whether asset turnover is there or not, operating profit margin is there or not. So if these two are given through that also, you can find out return on capital employed. Let me show you how. What is the formula of asset turnover? Just go up. It is revenue divided by assets, total assets into break down the two ratios. Operating profit margin. What is the formula for operating profit margin? Profit before interest and tax only. Operating profit means before. A profit before interest and tax PBIT divided by what operating profit margin okay so this is divided by revenue right sales so this revenue and this revenue gets cancelled off what are you left with PBIT divided by A profit before interest and tax divided by assets so now link this here you see Profit before tax and tax divided by assets. So asset is what? Equity plus liabilities only. 
equity plus liability sold is your asset. So you see these two are linked. So it's not too different, but sometimes ratios, two ratios can make a third ratio. It's like that. They are dependent on each other. 18. Current ratio, quick ratio, these are easy. This measures your liquidity, this two. Okay. This two liquidity ratios. You need to understand, you need to class, uh, categorize them into their respective categories. What type of ratios they are. So these two are ratios. If you see all this return on capital employed, asset turnover, interest cover, net profit margin, operating profit margin, gross profit margin, this all are profitability ratios. Okay. But definitely in the exam, not all will be asked. If you have 10 ratios, not all the 10 ratios will be asked, maybe two or three. But those three, two and three, if it comes, you should make sure that you know the formula. That's why you should know all the formula because you don't know which ratio will come. Like this return on capital employee, the second method. Sometimes is very, you will become very confused. Suddenly because you have been memorizing return on capital employed as profit before interest and tax divided by equity plus liabilities. That means your capital employed. Now suddenly in your exam, you are given asset turnover and operating profit margin and you don't know what to do with them. So that should not be your position in the exam. So coming to current ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities. Quick ratio, you just minus inventory from assets and divide by current liabilities. Here also higher it is, better it is. Okay. Make sure that when you are calculating ratios, it's not just the calculation. You should be able to comment it also. Comment means not increase, decrease. This increase, this decrease, no. Because they are not giving any insight to it, any meaning to it. If you just increase, everyone can understand through numbers that it increased or decreased. Why it increased or decreased? That why you have to answer. Why it happened? For example, your operating profit margin went down. Why? Because your, maybe your cost of sale increased. Right? Cost of sale increased because your raw material increased. Your purchases became more expensive. So these are the reasons. So the next are 20, 21, 22. Receivable, inventory day, payable day. These are in days. So you have to multiply all this by 365 days. Trade receivable divided by revenue. Inventory divided by cost of sales. Trade papers divided by purchases. Sometimes they might not give you the purchases. Then you have to take cost of sales here. Okay? Most of the time, it is cost of sales only you have to take. But the revenue and cost of sale will be given to you. Okay. Now, so based on this 20, 20, 21, 22, 23 is given. Cash operating cycle. You can calculate how. Inventory day, receivable day, minus payable day. This to you add because this is an asset. You are collecting. You are receiving cash from inventory and receivable day. But payable, cash is going out. So deduct it and find the cash operating cycle. How many days it takes you to receive the cash? How many? What is the cycle? So definitely if they ask you cash operating cycle, you have to calculate inventory days. You have to calculate receivable day. You have to calculate payable day for calculating this three. One, two, three. You have to know the formula here. Coming to 24, 25. 24 and 25 are similar, but the you can calculate it in different way. It depends. One way of calculating getting is debt over equity. The other way is debt, debt divided by equity. So they take total over here. Debt divided by total, amount of finance or debt divided by equity, anything. So in the question, sometimes they give you like this. When they, especially for capital structure and all, to find asset beta and equity beta, they might give you like this, debt is to equity. Debt to equity, two is to one. Okay, so all they might tell you, that uh, debt is this much and the total amount is that much. So that means in that total uh, debt is also included with the equity. Sometimes they might give you like this debt uh, is to equity plus debt. Okay. Now 26 working capital simply current assets minus current liabilities 27 dividend yield. 
dividend yield, dividend cover, PE, earnings yield. These are very important for AFM's perspective. Okay, other ratios are not as so much, but this are definitely the last few ratios are more important than the previous ones. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, just dividend yield, dividend cover. Please understand the importance between these two because most of the students confuse between these two uh, formulas. Dividend yield and dividend cover. Dividend yield means dividend per share divided by market price into 100. Dividend cover is earnings per share divided by dividend per share. So make sure that for dividend yield, you need dividend per share. And that you need for dividend cover as well. Okay. In dividend yield, dividend per share is in the numerator. Dividend cover, it comes down. Then, here it is earnings per share for dividend cover. For dividend yield, it is dividend per share. For dividend yield, dividend cover, earnings per share. Divided by dividend per share. And this you don't multiply by 100 okay this is just a cover cover you don't you never multiply by 100 yield yes price earnings ratio market price divided by earnings per share so if you see here here they are using the market price and earnings per share this two you see all these three are linked 27 28 29 market price why because price earnings per share earnings you see it comes from the first two words only price comes up earnings come down but it has to be per share not the total earnings per share and market price for one share what is the market okay and for dividend yield first first at least memorize dividend yield forget about dividend common number in order for you not for you not to get confused look at the word dividend yield dividend comes first to know so dividend here also will come first dividend per share but everything is in per share remember that that much is enough no total dividend everything per share whether it is dividend yield dividend cover price earning ratio also earnings you have to take not dividend but it has to be per share everything is per share only here so dividend per share divided by what yield yield means market price okay Yield means uh, market price because look at 30. Earnings yield. This is dividend yield. This is earnings yield. Earnings per share divided by market price. You see the word earning. So here also earning comes first. But per share. Yield. Yield means market price. So for dividend yield also market price goes down. Earnings yield also market price is in the denominator. So this, this, the word yield means market price comes down. And dividends or dividend per share. Earnings. Earnings per share. Okay. Once you have memorized it. Come to dividend cover. Dividend cover means what? Just note dividend per share will go down now. Okay, dividend cover. Dividend will go down. And divide by earnings. Earnings will come up. Earnings per share. Okay. But, but make sure that you know dividend yield properly. Once you know dividend yield properly, there are very low chances that you are you are going to make any mistakes in dividend cover okay if dividend cover is given to you and if you see both are share only for dividend cover both are per share per share earnings divided by dividend simply okay that means how much of your dividend you are able to pay from your current earnings that's what dividend cover means okay another thing uh, another way you can memorize the dividend cover look at interest cover Profit before interest and tax divided by interest charge, right? So this cover means what? Earnings only. Earnings only. Earnings come up and this interest goes down. Profit before interest and tax. Same way for dividend cover also. You see, earnings comes up, but it's earnings per share when it comes to dividend per share. You're not taking profit before interest and tax. And this dividend, before it was interest, now dividend. This dividend goes down. And this is also per share. That's the only difference. Otherwise, it's very similar to your interest cover. I'm just telling you the ways through which you can remember. Okay. Definitive formula is there. But once you understand the logic also, why it is like this, it becomes more easier. Students find it more fun to memorize it. Okay. Because this is how I used to memorize. And trust me when I'm saying this, that 
I don't know whether it is whatever it is, whether the way I remember, or I have a good memory and all. But once I memorize a formula up to date, Alhamdulillah, I never forget my formulas. I always, you know, it's there. It never happened to me that I went to the exam hall and I forgot the formula. No. In fact, I never had to look uh, my formula sheet. Up to date, never. I never had to refer it because I know I was very confident about it and I remember it. But I don't used to sit for hours and hours and memorize the formulas. No. I know the technique like this, how to remember something. Okay. So I want you also to apply this so that you can remember a formula for a long term. And maybe someday you can teach this to someone else. Because there are always fun side of making uh, you remember the formulas rather than you just sitting. Okay. Dividend cover on his Persia divided by dividend Persia. This one divided. It becomes very boring when you say like this and repeat, you know. And definitely questions. You have to do questions. I have seen questions on P ratio, dividend cover, dividend yield, right? Now, goodwill. So I think we are with, yeah, we are almost over. 31, 32, and 33. So 33 uh, formulas are there. And these formulas are not there in your formula sheet, mind you. So goodwill. Goodwill comes in your question number one only group accounting. You definitely have to calculate a goodwill. Or goodwill is given to you, you have to correct the goodwill. So in any way, you have to know the goodwill formula. So cost of accusation, yeah, right? Your consideration minus fair value of net assets into the per percentage acquired. For example, you have acquired a subsidy for 60%. So 60% of fair value of net assets, right? If NCI is there, you have to add NCI also. But this is just for goodwill. Don't add NCI now. We are coming to the next. Next one is fair value formula for goodwill. So here we have to add NCI with the cost of accusation and then we have to deduct the total net asset. So in order to calculate goodwill, what should we do? Cost of accusation. Most of the time this is given. So you don't have to do any adjustments. Sometimes you have to do some adjustments. For example, if it's not in cash, they might tell you in terms of shares or shares plus cash or contingent consideration is there. So make sure that you know how to include it and what are the things that will be included in the consideration. But most of the time it's easy. It's given that they have purchased it at this much. Fair value of NCI. NCI can be calculated using two methods. I'm writing it down here. Okay. It's coming here. One is fair value. One is proportionate share. Fair value, if it's fair value, it will be given to you. Sometimes fair value, they will say that uh, the fair value is taken like this. They will give you the share price. Okay. And they will give you the number of shares. So in that way also you can find out the NCI. But most of the time fair value of NCI is given as it is easy. Proportionate share means you have to take the percentage of NCI into the net asset. Let's say 60% you have bought. So NCI will be 40% into net asset. Okay. And that net asset is, is this net asset only. On this you have to take it and minus total net asset okay so net asset you have to calculate calculation is required for net asset they will not give you as it is some adjustment one or two adjustments relating to fair value upwards maybe there's an increase in fair value of land increase in fair value of some machinery that you have to include in the net asset okay so sometimes they will give you the net asset but some adjustments are required. Most of the time adjustment is required. Not so many, but one or two relating to fair value of some non-current assets. So that you have to, it could be intangible asset also, anything that you have to include in the net asset and it will go up and then you have to take this. Deduct it and find the, this one. And this method only we use in our group accounting, not the first one. And uh, when you're taking, remember when you're taking net asset, there's a, that table that you have to follow. Share capital, retain earnings other components of uh, equity if it's, it's if it's given then it comes fair value your fair value adjustment then depreciation also you have to take on that don't forget one is at the reporting date one is at the date of this is at the date of accusation at the date of reporting date remember at the date of reporting is always the figures that are given in your statement of financial position and at the accusation date it will be given to you in paragraphs the so and so share capital same remains the same that's why i wrote s retail earnings will change definitely this will be lower and this will be higher 
because post accusation is also included uh, at the date of accusation that's why in your return earnings this will go up sorry in your statement of financial position so that difference only you have to find out other components of equity sometimes they will give sometimes are not muddy but it will be different it will change like return earnings fair value most of the time they they might give you sometimes so let's say 5 million or sometimes it's a balancing figure most of the time in fact it's a balancing figure and depreciation will not come here it will it will never come on the date of accusation it will come on the date of reporting date only based on this only for example this will be divided by two two years and then this net asset let's say 100 200 see so what is your post accusation profit the difference between this two 100 it increased from 100 no from 100 to 200 so 100 is your post accusation profit but when you are taking net asset at the date of accusation for goodwill calculation you have to take this not at the reporting date you have to take this 100 understood sometimes what happens they give you this 100 and they tell you then you can find the balancing figure sometimes they don't give you this 100 you have to find out like this add 5 and then you will get okay and fair value adjustments you have to include for both at the date of accusation as well as this one it will be same only okay so this is the table remember that table when net asset comes finally the last formula and this is relating to associate this one is for a subsidiary okay because when you are acquiring a subsidiary only you have to calculate a goodwill we don't calculate goodwill when we take a associate or financial instruments so carrying value of associate initial cost this cost will be given to you okay this is the one of the answer. plus or minus because it depends it could be losses as well if it's a loss you deduct if it's a profit you add share of post accusation profit share means what let's say your associate is 30 percent less than 50 percent is associate right 20 to 50 percent so 30 percent of profit post accusation profit which post accusation profit are you taking this post accusation profit this 100 the difference between net asset 100 and 200 that 100 you are taking on that 100 you are taking 30 percent you see that net asset table is very useful for so many things usually that comes as uh, working number two after your group structure is number one working number two is net asset number three is then your goodwill nci rest all follows return earnings everything okay and how we have for this nci percentage no if subsidiary is 60 percent nci is 40 percent nothing like that for associate associate is only one percentage 30 percent 20 percent 35 percent okay if it's losses you deduct it could be the share of losses also then you have to deduct from the initial cost minus impairment don't forget this goodwill impairment why because impairment is also a cost now see from this post accusation profit from that profit uh, you have to deduct the cost also and this impairment is an expense that expense you have to deduct but only to the associates right for the associate the impairment for the associate you have to deduct now the whole amount of impairment so and another thing we are not talking about nci here okay most of you will be confused that we have to take nci percentage fair value of proportionate changes no this is relating to associate no so, so, so associate straight away you can take their percentage and deduct the impairment okay or if impairment is not there then simply just the initial cost plus or minus the post accusation profit right so that's it we have finished all the formulas here this is uh, related to your sbr i've taken it from loan signal so now that's it right if i have if i before the exam if i come across anything useful like this i will definitely upload it on my youtube channel so make sure that you share this with your friends okay so till then take care and best of luck for your exam